In this tutorial, we're going to introduce you to rotary machining. This is where we take one of the linear axis and wrap it around a cylinder. And this is only applicable if you have a rotary axis on your machine and a compatible post processor to run any tool pass on. So this is where we're heading. So let's start off by creating a new file. So let's come up to file and close. So let's go ahead and create that new file. So let's click on create a new file. And we're going to make sure that our job is a rotary job. And this job is going to be 12 inches in length, three inches in diameter. And we're going to set our Z zero position to the cylinder axis, because in this scenario, we're not quite sure whether the surface is even all the way around or if it's perfect all the way around. So we're going to go for the cylinder axis in this scenario. Our XY datum is going to be in the bottom left hand corner. And in this case, we have the orientation as a long X axis, which means we're going to be wrapping our material around Y. Now, this depends on what machine you have. You can usually tell by looking at your machine. Um, but if you are not sure, you can always contact your machine manufacturer to double check uh, which way you need to or uh, orientate your machine. We're not going to flip our design. And for this modeling resolution, we're going to choose standard because we're not using any 3D models. So we can just use standard uh, because we're going to be using some text in this tutorial. As for our material settings, we're going to be using Canadian maple. And with that, I'm just going to click OK. So now that we've had a look at our job setup, let's look at the bottom left hand corner of the software here. You'll notice that we've got our job dimensions, which we defined in our job setup. So we've got our width of 12 inches. But interestingly, we've got a height of 9.42848 inches. And what that actually is, is our diameter of three inches unwrapped flat over here. So to better show you what's going on here, what the software is actually doing is it's actually uh, taking a flat worksheet and then wrapping it around the Y axis, which we determined in our job setup to create the rotary job. So if I go over to my 3D view, right now you're not going to see anything because we haven't got anything uh, currently designed. But if we pop up to this button here and click the toggle material block visibility in the 3D view on or off, you notice now we have our cylinder and this is what it will look like. But there is another button that allows us to see what the software is actually doing when it creates tool pass for a rotary job. So if we click this button just here, which is toggle automatic wrapping in 3D view on or off, you'll notice we now have a flat piece of material. And what the software actually does is it takes a toolpath and applies it to a flat surface and then wraps that around our uh, Y axis as we determined in our job setup. And that's how it achieves the uh, rotary setup for our rotary jobs. But with that said, I'm just going to turn that back off now. And then I'm going to come back to our 2D view. So we can look at adding in some text uh, to further this tutorial. So now let's pop up to our uh, Create Vectors menu. And we're going to choose this option here to draw text within a vector box. Now, we currently don't have a vector box. And you'll notice that the software has then treated the entire worksheet as the vector box. And that's indicated by this dashed line around the edge of our worksheet here. So with that, I'm just going to put wrapped and then on a separate line, rotary, all in caps, text. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to choose our drop down to choose our font type. I'm going to hit A on the keyboard to bring us to all of our fonts that begin with A. I'm going to choose Arial. And I want it to be bold. and I want it to be centered as well. And that looks pretty great to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit close. Now that we have our text laid out, we can now have a look at adding some toolpaths to our text. And to do that, we're going to pop over to our toolpath menu. And to do that, we need to come up to the top left here and click on this button, which will take us over to our toolpath menu. Now, the first thing we need to do is make sure that our mater material setup is the exact same as it will be on the machine. So it's important that we get these parameters right here because these need to be the same as on our machine. So our diameter is three inches. Our XY datum is in the bottom left hand corner. As stated earlier, because we don't know if the surface of our cylinder is even or not, we're going to choose the center of our cylinder as our Z zero point. Our model position in the material doesn't matter currently because we don't have any 3D content that we're using in this one. So that's okay. 
but I will change my clearance to be 0 0.5 and my plunge as well as my Z gap above material, which is great for my machine. But of course, please make sure to set these parameters to uh, the correct amount for your machine, as I understand that some machines may vary. So with that, let's just click OK. OK, so the first toolpath we're going to run for our demonstration is actually going to be a pocket toolpath. Now, we need to make sure our text is selected, which it is because you can see currently it's in pink. If I click off of it, it's now black. So just click on our text and as, as it's all grouped together, it'll select the whole lot. And we can come up to our pocket toolpath operation. Now we're going to make sure our start depth is zero, but our cut depth is going to be 0.1 inches. Now you can see I've got an eighth inch emerald already selected here, but I'm just going to go back into the form to show you uh, something rather important. So if you look on the top right of our tool database, you'll see that we have a drop down and I've got mine set to desktop rotary along X. Now that's because I've already configured my machine within the software. So the software knows I'm running a rotary machine uh, along the X axis. So it's going to wrap in the Y axis. And that's important because now I've got my tool database set up with the right tools for my rotary machine as well. Just something important to note. If you'd like to learn anything more about machine configuration, how you can set this up yourself, please uh, do go over to our machine configuration guide, which we'll happily put in the related videos for you. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, look in the description below. We'll get you the links for there for the uh, guide down there for you as well. Now, with that said, I've got my rotary machine set up there, so I'm going to make sure I've got my ML selected. Now, I've already selected this one, but I'm just going to check over the settings to make sure they're all OK. Happy with that, so I can close that out. And I don't need to do... Uh, any changes here, I'm going to keep it as an offset, climb, don't need any ramp plunge moves, um, don't need a pocket allowance, so I'm just going to go ahead and click calculate. Now, you can see our toolpath is ready to run, so let's preview that visible toolpath. Now, you may have seen very briefly there that the job actually unwrapped, ran the toolpath, and then wrapped it all around again. Uh, and that is what happens when we do our job. It'll uh, unwrap the toolpath, run the toolpath, then wrap it around our y-axis. Uh, as we explained earlier on in the video. Now, I think this looks quite nice. This is quite a nice pocket we've got here. I think the text has turned out quite quite great, actually. Now, if you did want to have a look at the view and you want to turn this around without clicking and dragging this around all the time, there's a couple of different view options you have here. So if you go up to the top right, if you click on X, you can look down the cylinder. If you click on Y, you can look at the back. If you click on the Z, you can look at the surface. And if you click on these buttons here, if you click on this button on the left, this will increase. So if I turn it this way first before I do this, just to show you what's going on. Now, if I click on this button on the left here, what will happen is this will turn our rotary job in 30 degree increments clockwise. So if I click on that, it'll keep turning it around and then anti-clockwise as well. So you can click that and turn it around as well. So I hope that helps in terms of viewing your actual preview. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and reset my preview and because I'm, I'm going to show you a different type of toolpath in just a moment. So if I just press reset, close out this form, and I'm going to right click on our pocket toolpath, and I'm just going to go to delete, delete this. And now we're ready to set up a different toolpath. And this time, what we're going to use is a V carve strategy. So we're going to come to our VCarve tool just here. And we're going to set a start depth of zero because we don't need one. Don't need a flat depth either. Now, currently, the tool I have is a V-bit, which is the default V-bit I've got in my software, which is a 90 degree, one and a quarter inch. But if you need to use a different V-bit or if you have a different V-bit, now is the time to change it. So you can do that just by, again, clicking select and checking the settings on changing your tool just over here for any tools that you've added to the database. In terms of clearance tools, I don't need to use any. don't need to use any settings here, so I'm just going to go ahead and click Calculate. Now you can see already it's mapped the tool pass onto our rotary job. I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to run our visible tool path. And again, you saw that it just unwrapped it, ran the V-carving tool path, and then wrapped it around again. And I think that looks very nice, actually. I'm quite happy with that. I prefer the V-carve on this one, I think gives a nice effect to our text just here. So at this stage, we can now look at saving off our toolpath. So I'm just going to go ahead and close our preview form down. I'm going to make sure that the VCarve toolpath I have is checked. 
I'm going to pop up to the Save Toolpath button just up here. Now, for demonstration purposes, we're going to save that to our desktop rotary along X machine. Now, you can see that just here in this Dropbox just here. Now, it's very important to note that the post processor has to support rotary moves. And this is the stage where the software is going to take what are essentially three axis calculated toolpaths and then convert them into rotary. Now, the post processor has to support rotary and needs to be set up that is configured correctly for what your rotary axis is. So, for example, I'm using the post processor uh, G code wrap Y2A in this case, where in our case, we are wrapping the Y axis. So we are going to choose to wrap the Y axis to the A uh, in our G code and the A being the typical designated G code for a rotary move. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can learn a lot more about uh, saving toolpaths and the specifics behind machine configuration by uh, consulting the videos that are linked in the description below or in the related videos to this video if you're on our website. So I'm just gonna go ahead and now click save. So let's just click on save toolpaths, give it an appropriate name. So I'm gonna call mine wrapped rotary text. So I know this is a wrapped rotary text toolpath and I can click save in a location where I know I'm gonna find it easily. So in this case, for my tutorial files for my introduction to wrapped rotary text, and there we are in my toolpath is now saved. So I can close out that form. And if you would like to, I would at this stage, save off my file as well. So again, you can come up to file, save as, I'm gonna call this one introduction to wrapped rotary text, which is nice and clear, nice and obvious as to what this is. And that's gonna be a CRV file that I can then save and I can make use of later. So if I wanna make any changes this far, I've now got it saved for later use. Now. That does conclude our tutorial, but I hope you have found this very useful. I hope you can see uh, the ease in which you can create toolpaths for rotary jobs within our software. And I hope you can apply these to some of your own projects as well. And as always, I encourage you to look at some of our other videos on our website. We've got some great videos on rotary uh, tutorials and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you for your time.